Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Jonathan Casey. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. This is a channel where I like to talk all things tech related. It doesn't matter if it's a smartphone, a camera, or a computer, chances are you're gonna see it on this channel. I deliver content in a unique and interesting format and I do it every single week. If that sounds good to you, go ahead and click that subscribe button. In this video, we're gonna be going over the results to the wide angle camera comparison that I did a little bit ago. So if you missed that video, go ahead and watch that one first. That way you can do your guesses and then come back and watch this one to find out the answers as to what number matched what camera. But uh, let's not waste any more time and jump straight into it. Camera number one was the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Camera number two was the LG G8X Thin Q. Camera number three was the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. And camera number four was the OnePlus 7T. So before we get into the results, let me just say a ton of you guys participated. I appreciate all of the participation and the engagement. So that goes to show me that you really liked this way of doing camera comparisons. So we're gonna proceed with doing them in a similar fashion. And the phone that most of you thought that looked the best was number three, which was the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. And it was by a huge margin. 74% of you chose the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. So that's definitely saying something. And for the runner up, we have number one, which was the iPhone 11 Pro Max. For third place, we have the LG G8X. And for fourth, which was only 3%, we have the OnePlus 7T. If I'm being honest, it doesn't surprise me that you guys chose the Galaxy Note 10 Plus more over all the other phones. I mean, we all know that it has an amazing wide angle camera, but I didn't realize that the margin from the 11 Pro Max to the Note 10 was going to be that drastic. I mean, we're talking 13%, to 74%. I mean, that is huge. Now, let's talk about what I personally feel. Now, of course, the better phone was the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. I definitely feel in terms of image quality, it was better. It handled colors a little bit better in terms of my liking. Colors are very subjective. It also handled sharpness a little bit better and distortion was well controlled and many of the shots had better dynamic range on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. So that being said, I gotta give the John Casey Image Quality Award to the Galaxy Note 10 plus next up we have consistency now this is where things get a little bit interesting because despite the galaxy note 10 plus looking better probably 90 percent of the time i gotta say while i was taking the photos i noticed there was more consistency with the iphone 11 pro max pretty much if you pointed that camera at an image you knew what to expect because it was just that consistent. Uh, it doesn't matter if you were taking it in the middle of the day or at night, if you're using the wide angle camera, you're gonna get very consistent results, especially when it comes to white balance color and even sharpness. The John Casey Award for having the most consistent image quality, iPhone 11 Pro Max. The next award I gotta give is for most impressive. And this is probably gonna catch you by surprise. Now, automatically you're going to assume that I'm going to pick the Galaxy Note 10 Plus or the iPhone 11 Pro. However, that is not the case because those phones have good cameras. We know that. All of the camera tests that have been performed, all of the testing that I've done personally, all of the images that I have on my phones, every time I look at photos that have been captured by those two phones, I know that I'm gonna get a good image. That being said, the most impressive to me was the LG G8X. In my opinion, ever since the LG V10, LG really has not focused on cameras as much. I mean, sure, they're, they're delivering specs. They're delivering the amount of cameras they need to to stay relevant in the space that we're in today. They're delivering the feature set within the software, but in terms of image processing, it just hasn't been that good. However, with the LG G8X, I feel like they've broken that trend. They've really separated themselves from the older LG phones while it still is over sharpened and sometimes the skin smoothing is pretty bad. I do gotta say it's a major improvement from what they've put out previously and I've been able to capture some really awesome shots as you can see in the samples during this video. And the last award for worst wide angle camera is gonna go to the OnePlus 7T. And it really doesn't have to do with image quality, even though it is very, very contrasty. And if you don't like contrast, you're definitely not gonna like the images coming off the OnePlus 7T's wide angle camera. It's more to do with the fact that it's really not that wide. I mean, the overall image quality is great. And if it was a little bit wider, I would put it above the LG G8X, but I mean, for a wide angle camera, it is still pretty tight. I know there's some other things to consider when talking about the best wide angle camera on a smartphone, such as video stabilization, which one can capture the best quality video, as well as frame rates and all that good stuff. 
So with that being said, if you wanna see a follow-up video focusing on the video aspect of these wide-angle cameras, let me know down in the comment section. Otherwise, we can move on to something like the best portrait mode, which we do have more phones that are able to do portrait mode so we can include more samples, more phones. I think we can make this a really cool thing. If you guys enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content just like this, and I will catch you beautiful people in the next video.